Here we have the Rolliflex SLX. Rolliflex is better known for its TLR cameras, that is twin lens reflex. This SLX is a single lens reflex camera. Reflex means the mirror goes up for exposure and automatically comes down, it reflexes back. Unlike, for example, the early Hasselblad cameras, such as 500C. Also, this is a fully electronic camera. Without a battery, this will not work at all. And yet, this is also seen as an iconic and modular camera with a ton of innovations of its own. This solves the problems of modularity in different ways. It doesn't just copy. For example, the back of this is opened very simply by pinching these two extra large buttons and this opens. It doesn't fall off, don't have to hold on to it. And inside of that, a very simple plastic, inexpensive holder comes out. That itself is great innovation. Compare this to the expensive and elaborate magazine in a Hasselblad. The amount of complexity inside this heavy object versus the almost disposable plastic here. Because the door is fixed, various elements are built into the door, this can be a commodity. You can have multiples of these ready to go. Very light also. However, one disadvantage of this is that you cannot take the film out mid-roll. If you take it out, it's exposed. Whereas with this Hasselblad, the film is protected by the dark slide and you can keep changing the film from, say, color to black and white. Also, these particular cartridges are interchangeable or reversible. The two sides are the same. There's no difference. You can see this engages, this engages with the mechanism. This can go there, this can go there, makes no difference. Another difference is that the film goes in in the direction that you would expect. Film goes in this way. In the Hasselblad version, the film goes the opposite direction of what you would expect. It simply drops in. No thinking required, and you close this. If you open this, you find that uh, there is a slightly more modern version of the viewfinder here. This is hinged, so all it needs is a pinching action, and it closes like this. Simple. You press the top, nothing to uh, no lever, no button, press the top, becomes a loop. Furthermore, press the top, in addition to being able to look this way, you can also look this way. By opening this section up, so it does the job of one of the accessories in the Hasselblad range. Closes closes and closes. Furthermore, even this can be removed, including the uh, focusing ring. So as you can see, this is also a modular camera in its own way. Every problem has been solved in a different technical way. On this side, we have a number of things that may be counterintuitive. As this has a motor drive, this has nothing to do with the film winding, although it's in the same position as a lot of TLRs and even the Hasselblad cameras where the film winding mechanism is. This, in fact, is the ASA or DIN setting for the film sensitivity. And this is the shutter speed which is remote from the lens, but it communicates the setting to the lens electronically. It goes from 
equal B to 30 seconds, 15, 8, 4, 2, 1, and then all the way to 1 500th of a second. It's quite a good range. The lens is designed by Zeiss, but built by Rolly. It is a coated lens. This particular lens is F80 planar, which is regarded as the standard lens similar to 35 millimeter films, 50 millimeter lens. The hood and all the other devices are bayonet, similar to Hasselblad. The lens uh, removal is accomplished by this knob over here, and it opens in the expected direction, left to open, right to close. When you open, you find that there are many cams here communicating the settings between the lens and the body. The lens itself is, is a marvel. It operates intuitively between the manual mode and automatic mode. This is now in the manual mode. You can select the aperture between 2.8 and 22 very simply like this. You can focus with that ring and the depth of field is shown over there. For example, at 16, everything between 16 and 16 on the meter scale is in focus. But if this goes to A, see what happens to that red band over there. It comes down and now there's a white marker there. That is the uh, automatic exposure. So if we put this, for example, on 1 25th of a second over there on the shutter. And if we press this button over here, which is the exposure meter, it gives us the exposure 5.6. Let's change this to 1 60th. Now it gives us 8. Keep going. Now it gives us a bit more than 11. So you can use this in the automatic mode or manual mode. The interesting thing is that if you want to use the exposure meter in the manual mode, counter intuitively, you have to put this on the A for automatic so that you can read the exposure here. Now you know what is the, what is the correct exposure. What is the camera going to do? Now that you know that, you can just take it back and set it manually, either exactly what the camera recommended or a bit more or a bit less. So it ties manual and automatic together very intuitively. Here we have a dial for the type of shutter that we have. Zero means camera is off, single means one shot, and C means continuous at a whopping two frames a second. A few additional features are available through this connection point here. For example, this. It's a cable release plus some other additions. If you plug that in, you put it on the S, this green button gives you a very smooth shutter release, much better than the manual cable release. But on the other side, it has a slider. So you can see this diagram, it lifts the mirror. The shutter has not been activated yet. Mirror is out of the way, vibration is over, then shoot. Mirror is back to original. So mirror lockup is achieved electronically this way. This camera is designed for right-handed people and left-handed people because there are two identical buttons here and there. At the bottom, there are two tripod mounts, small and large. What other devices are available for this?
many. As this is also a modular camera, there are many viewfinders are available for it, different backs are available for it, many lenses are available for it, and even different cable release types are available for it. So this is a more modern electronic version of, for example, the Hasselblad V-series. If Hasselblad were electronically inclined, it might have evolved into something like this. Now, one area of research, in case you're interested, is compare this to the Hasselblad moon camera, the camera that went on the moon. That was also electronic, and it had also a vertical configuration with a motor drive at the bottom. It looks very similar to this, and in many ways it would have worked similar to this because there was no time to use those heavy gloves to fiddle with it. So a natural course of development of Hasselblad would have been something similar to this, but it went in different directions. This camera is not without fault. It is not as robust as, for example, Hasselblad V-series. It has some strange weak points. For example, this back door. It uses a lot of plastic on the edges, and many of them in this century have cracks in them. This very door has been repaired by me. You cannot see it anymore. Another major flaw, which a lot of people have problems with, is this. I'll show you. Take this out. This door latches against the body over a very small element over here. So although this is a metal latch, this is a plastic catch. And after 47 years, that nearly always deteriorates. And there are lots and lots of these cameras out there with the door not closing. Here at the Tech Heritage Museum, we never give up. So what you see here is not original. It's identical to the original. Original was completely deteriorated and would not catch at all. So this has been made up out of uh, some hard plastic that comes from the back of a CD drive casing, a very hard plastic. It has been ground with a Dremel, drilled exactly to the geometry of the original one. So it now works, but how many people can do that. Now, if you're interested in this camera, don't give up on them. There's some um, camera bodies being sold as parts. Look at the pictures to see if that part is intact. Then you can get a donor body and replace that. Another way is to go online and some people helpfully 3D print that element, and this is one. So we even have a spare one for that, 3D printed in hard plastic. So even if this deteriorates, this can be used. Never give up. So I close the back, so we know how to solve that problem. Another thing about this camera is the fact that it's fully electronic. It means that this battery needs to work. You press this tab over here and you take out this battery. As you can see, it's not a standard battery. Nobody makes a battery looking like this. So inside of this case, there are lots of little batteries in that direction. So when after 47 this dies, we're stuck. Again, don't give up. For the time being, there are helpful people out there, some in the United States, some in Netherlands, who refurbish these batteries. Some screws here, they open it up, they put alternative batteries inside it. This very battery has gone through that process and inside it is an entirely new set of batteries should last another 15, 20 years. I just demonstrated it too and it was working. 
some helpful people have also anticipated that when that battery doesn't work, some people throw them away. They assume that it's useless. So they 3D print the casing of this as well. And I'll show you one. This is the alternative 3D printed battery, which you can also buy online while they last. If you have one of those cameras, buy one now in anticipation of the battery not working anymore. Now these alternatives are such that the battery runs vertically and there's only three batteries. Even has a fuse. It has all the same connections as the original battery here and even a charging point. Since this is a different battery type to the original, it needs a different charger with a different power control. So they come with a different charger which attaches here. And when you put this in, it's a completely acceptable aesthetic. Goes in like that. And no problem. Just as an additional charging point here. The original one, which is this one, has a different kind of charger. This is the original charger. So this drops into there to charge. This one charges directly through there. To summarize, there are good things about the battery and bad things about battery. Without the battery, this will not work at all. Battery can die. It's a lot of trouble changing the battery. But when you do have a battery, a charged battery, it works brilliantly. And since everything communicates to everything else electronically, <clears throat> you have all the conveniences, internal metering, automatic setting, manual setting, the same Zeiss lens as in a Hasselblad, for example, 80 millimeter planar, many of the same features. Let's have a little family reunion. What you see here is the original Rolleiflex SLX and the child of Rolleiflex SLX, this is SLX2, although the two does not appear anywhere. But this is for sure the successor to this one after a couple of years. There's hardly any difference between the two of course, the lens is different. This is a magnificent uh, 120 millimeter Carl Zeiss lens, although this is a Rolly lens uh, designed by Zeiss. That's uh, uh, not the issue because all the lenses are interchangeable. The only difference on the front is, you can see, there is a cable release hole over here where this one doesn't have it. This one works with the electronic cable release. And also there's chrome detailing around this one. There's no chrome detailing around that one. This is more black everywhere, hardly any chrome at all. In the same way, let me just uh, show you this. The original SLX has chrome piece over here. Whereas SLX2 doesn't have chrome over there. It is all black. Other than that, SLX2 and SLX uh, original are identical. Let's have a look at other things we have for this Rolleiflex. This absolutely magnificent wide angle Zeiss lens. Zeiss lens f40 wide angle lens f1.4 distagon i look forward to doing some architectural photography or landscape photography with this one to show you later other accessories this is a bayonet mount polarizing filter has two rings rotating against each other and uh, depending on the angle it um, affects sunlight, reflective light of the water and so on. This is the alternative Rolleiflex viewfinder, which we're going to fit in now. And you will see it's very similar to the way it works on Hasselblad. Very 
There it is. Very nice addition to the camera. This is an alternative focusing screen. You can see the difference between this and this. Alternative focusing screen, which can be fitted in there, just like the alternative focusing screens of Hasselblad. Let's quickly demonstrate how to load the film into the Rolliflex SLX film cartridge. For this purpose, <coughs> we'll take the glove off. The Rolliflex cartridge is multi-directional, so it doesn't matter which side is which. Whichever side is available, you use it. This is not a real film. This is actually just a film backing paper. Put this in this slot. With a real film, When this comes to an arrow, you stop. This is a backing and it's the wrong end of it anyway because this has been used. Let's say the arrow comes in there, you stop right at that point. So this is now ready. That didn't take very long. Goes in here, ready to be loaded into the camera.